So today's speaker is uh, Valérie Duenich de Damien. Uh, she has defended uh, her PhD studies in Amiens uh, recently, and she will speak about eigenvalues and constant arithmetic progressions for substitutive sequences. Okay, thank you. So hello everybody, and thank you for the organizer for this invitation. So the topic of this of this uh, talk is uh, to check if a uh, substitutive sequence uh, has a constant arithmetic progression. Uh, so I will first present uh, the questions, the question of uh, this talk with uh, two classical examples. So we start with the period double sequence. In uh, this sequence, you can see that there exists uh, a constant uh, subsequence uh, with uh, period two, that, that is uh, x uh, 2n is a constant equal to the letter zero. And uh, we also know that this, this sequence is a uh, tuplet, which means that uh, each letter of this sequence belong to an arithmetic, a constant arithmetic progression. So we can have a, a progression of a period uh, 4, 8, 16, and one. And we can see that uh, every letter belongs to such a, a constant arithmetic progression. In the opposite, uh, we have the tumor sequence. Uh, uh, for this sequence, we know that there exists uh, no arithmetic, uh, no constant arithmetic progression. For example, if we take the subsequence uh, x3n, uh, you can see that it starts with a zero, and we know that uh, in a finite time we will have a, a different letter. So the question. Uh, is to decide whether uh, such a, a sequence has a constant arithmetic progression. We want to answer decidability questions uh, and we want to have a, an algorithm that uh, checks if such a, a progression exists. And we will see that this question is closely related to the dynamical eigenvalues uh, associated to the system uh, defined by the substitution. Uh, so this was a, a very short introduction. We will now introduce uh, the necessary definitions. Uh, to define a substitution, we will use the definition in uh, Kefelec's book, that is, uh, uh, we will consider a morphism that is a uh, right prolongable on a letter and left prolongable also. And it should be growing on each letter. Uh, with these uh, properties, we know that uh, the morphism sigma would have a fixed point, uh, um, a two-sided fixed point uh, generated by the, the letters B and uh, A. Uh, in this talk, we will say a world for a, a finite element defined uh, on this alphabet, and uh, a sequence will denote uh, an, an infinite element. Uh, also, where we pick uh, some letters in the same alphabet, so it can be uh, sometimes two-sided or one-sided. Uh, now we can uh, define the, a purely substitutive sequence as a, a fixed point of uh, a substitution. So this fixed point should be admissible. Uh, this means that uh, the word BA appears in uh, the image of a letter under a power of sigma. And if we take a purely substitutive sequence and compute its image by a morphism uh, phi, we have what we call a substitutive sequence. So we should take uh, for five letter-to-letter uh, -letter morphism, uh, and it could uh, have uh, an image in uh, an alphabet different from uh, the one where X uh, is defined. 
Um, so for example, if we look at uh, this substitution sigma and uh, this uh, uh, morphism phi, uh, we can define the, uh, the fixed point of sigma. In fact, uh, we can have uh, two different fixed points uh, because sigma is uh, right prolongable on uh, zero and it's, it is left prolongable on one and two. So for example, if we take uh, uh, one zero and we iterate it uh, with the substitution sigma, we obtain uh, this infinite uh, sequence uh, that we call a purely substitutive sequence. And if we take its images, its image by the morphism phi, we will obtain uh, this substitutive sequence. Uh, when we have a substitution, we can define the, uh, the dynamical system that, are, that is associated to the, this substitution. So the dynamical system associated to sigma is the system defined by the shift map S and the set uh, X uh, sigma of uh, sequences that uh, have the, the which uh, language is included in the language of sigma. Here, the language of sigma denotes the set of uh, words that appear in uh, the image of uh, sigma uh, to the M of uh, any letter. And the language of X is the set of all factors of X. Uh, so one uh, important question in the study of uh, such system was the following uh, one, the periodicity of uh, morphic sequences. Uh, so we, we use the word morphic sequences when we have a, a morphism sigma, which is not necessarily a substitution and uh, that can define a, a fixed point. So we will say morphic sequence and purely morphic sequence in the same way as we use uh, substitutive and purely substitutive sequence. So this study has lasted uh, for uh, three decades and begins in uh, 1986, uh, the same year we have uh, three different uh, results. So, so Ponzio who, who proves that uh, the periodicity of a fixed point of morphism is decidable. The same year, uh, Harjou and Lina proved the, per, the ultimate per periodicity for uh, the same uh, sequences. And uh, Onkala proved the periodicity of an automatic sequence. Uh, it proves that uh, this is decidable. So an automatic sequence is a morphic sequence, a morphic sequence defined by a morphism of constant lengths. Uh, and uh, some years later, we have the result for, from uh, Alava, Arjou, Kerki, and Rigo in 2010, who proves the uh, ultimate p periodicity of a morphic sequence. Uh, they prove that this is decidable for a given period p. And a few years later, uh, Durant proved the periodicity of uh, primitive morphic sequence is decidable in 2012 and in the general case in uh, 2013. So the topic of this talk is uh, uh, follows these uh, results and we are not interested in the periodicity of the whole sequence but uh, as I said, uh, we are interested in the existence of a constant uh, arithmetic progression in the sequence. Okay, so uh, we will need these uh, last uh, definitions. So an arithmetic progression of a sequence X is a sequence of the form X K plus NP when K uh, belongs to Z, and it is constant if uh, each of these letters are equal. Uh, 
if we have an arithmetic progression, a constant arithmetic progression, perhaps it could be included in a, a different uh, arith constant arithmetic progression. And if it's not the case, we say that P is an es essential period. So this means that P is a uh, minimal uh, for this uh, arithmetic progression. Okay, so the first part of this, uh, the third, sorry, part of this talk is devoted to the rational eigenvalues of the dynamical system. Uh, our motivation is the following uh, results uh, that was already known, but uh, we didn't find uh, an explicit proof. Uh, and it uh, asserts that uh, for a primitive substitution with fixed point uh, X, uh, if we have a constant arithmetic progression in X with period, uh, with essential period P, then P is uh, the denominator of uh, an eigenvalues associated to uh, the dynamical system X sigma S. So here we have a necessary condition for having a, a constant arithmetic progression. And uh, if we compute the set of eigenvalues, we will have a, a set of uh, integers P where we can uh, pick uh, some of these integers to check if they're correspond to an, a constant arithmetic progression. So the idea is the following. We will first compute the rational eigenvalue. What, this is the topic of uh, this part of the talk. And in the last part, we will check if there exist some periods for a constant arithmetic progression among this set. Okay, so we will define what uh, an eigenvalue associated to this dy dynamical system uh, is. So the eigenvalues associated to uh, a dynamical system, it can be a, a symbolic dynamical system or not. And it's the uh, eigenvalues associated to the unitary operator. That's to say there exists a, a function such that uh, composed with the transformation, we obtain uh, lambda times the function f. So here we did not buy T the transformation map because uh, it's not only, uh, it does not hold only for, uh, for the case of uh, symbolic dynamics, but for each uh, dynamical system of this form. And we will say that uh, lambda is a rational eigenvalue if we can write it uh, in this way, so it's uh, an exponential of a two i pi times a rational number. So we will start with the case of a constant length uh, substitution because we have a, a nice result of a decking in 1978. And this uh, theorem asserts that the sets of uh, eigenvalues associated to a substitution of constant length L equals to uh, all the exponential 2i k pi over uh, a power of the length times an integer h that we call the eight of sigma. I will just uh, define it below. So we can see that uh, in the case of constant length substitution, all the, the eigenvalues are rationals. And uh, we can uh, see that uh, all essential periods of uh, uh, constant length substitution would have a period uh, that divides uh, such uh, an integer h times uh, l to the m. So the eight of sigma is uh, defined in this way in uh, Deking's article. So we will compute uh, the maximal integer that is prime with the length uh, L and that uh, divides the GCD of all the position where we find the letter X uh, zero. Uh, 
so for example, if we consider this substitution, we will find that x0 equals to 0. And it appears that at uh, position 0, 4, 8, 10, and so on. And we can see that uh, the GCD of all these uh, indices uh, is 2. So the height of the substitution is uh, 2. And is in his article, Deakin gives a, a method uh, that we can use to compute the height uh, just uh, knowing all the images of letters. So uh, the height is uh, two and it means that we can uh, uh, separate the letters in X into two subsequences, the two N and the two N plus uh, one. And we will see that uh, we have two different alphabets for these two subsequences. So in blue for the even indices, we have only zero and two. And in red, for the odd indices, we will have uh, only ones. So we, the calculation of the height give us uh, a partition of the alphabet uh, A into uh, two sub alphabets that appears uh, periodically in X. And we will have the same, uh, whatever the height will be. If we have an height equals to five, we will uh, separate the, the alphabet into five subsets that will appear periodically in the sequence X. So for the constant length uh, case, all the eigenvalues can be calculated uh, very quickly. In the general case, uh, we won't compute all the, the eigenvalues, but only the um, rational ones. And we will introduce the following definition. So we will call the periodic spectrum of a dynamical system. Here we have the system XT, which uh, is not necessarily a symbolic dynamical system. And we will define the set of essential period as the essential period for a Clopin set U. Uh, that's to say more precisely that there exists a subset U of X where we go periodically. Uh, for example, here we have X in this subset. And if we apply the transformation map three times, we go back to this set. So we have T3 of X in the subset uh, U, and we will have also T6 of X in this subset and so on. And if we go before, we will have uh, the same uh, behavior. So here we follow the notation of uh, Williams uh, that, uses, uh, that uses this notation for uh, the study of uh, tuplets uh, sequences. So now we will focus on uh, this set, the periodic spectrum of the dynamical system. And in, the, in general, we will have this result that is also already uh, used in different articles, but uh, we didn't find any complete proof. So for a minimal dynamical system and a non-negative integer p, we will have the equivalence between uh, the, these uh, three properties. So the fact that uh, we have uh, exponential of two i pi over p is a continuous eigenvalue of the system. This is the same as uh, saying that p belongs to the periodic spectrum. And this is equivalent also to the fact that there exists a minimal subset of X that is a P periodic and uh, we have a P periodic partition. And we also have a, a P periodic factor of uh, the dynamical system XT. Uh, for example, uh, I will translate all these properties for two examples of uh, substitutive sequences. So if we consider uh, the tumor substitution sigma, 
which is defined by zero goes to zero one and one goes to one zero. Uh, we can compute according to Deking's uh, theorem that the set of eigenvalues has an exponential of two i k pi over two to the m. And as a consequence, the, here the denominator two to the m forms a set of the periodic spectrum associated to this system. And we know that there exists a minimal set V with period two to the M and the set V can be written in this case as a union of uh, cylinders. And the last property is uh, that uh, Z over 2MZ with the addition is a factor of uh, the initial system. Okay, and the second example is uh, Fibonacci substitution, which is defined by zero goes to zero one and one goes to zero. Uh, it is already known that uh, the eigenvalues of the underlying dynamical system are the exponential of uh, n times the golden uh, ratio, modulus one. And in particular, there is only one rational eigenvalue, which is one. So the periodic spectrum is reduced to one and there exists uh, no proper periodic subset and no proper factor for the system. Uh, a consequence of uh, this remark is that there won't exist uh, any uh, constant arithmetic progression in the fixed point of sigma because uh, the only possible period would be one and uh, it's, uh, we easy, easily see that there don't exist uh, this kind of uh, constant arithmetic progression. So with these uh, properties, uh, we will have a, a method to compute uh, all the rational eigenvalues associated to uh, a substitutive dynamical system. And I will present uh, just after the lemma that we need uh, to obtain this proposition and the, the methods, the algorithmical methods that uh, we will use for this uh, computation. And the key point is in the case of a proper substitution, then these eigenvalues only depend on the incidence matrix of uh, the substitution sigma. Here, the word proper means that uh, the image of uh, any letter by sigma starts with the same letter. In our example, we will have that sigma of uh, any letter starts with uh, the letter zero. Um, if sigma is not proper, we can uh, use the following remark uh, that has been proved in a, a paper by uh, Fabien Durand in uh, 2000. So there exists a proper substitution phi so that the dynamical system uh, associated to phi is conjugated to the dynamical system associated to sigma. And in particular, these two systems will share the same eigenvalues. So we can compute uh, this substitution then for phi, we can compute the eigenvalues according to the matrix of uh, phi. And this will give us also the eigenvalues associated to sigma. This can be done algorithmically and uh, it has also been developed in SAGE by uh, Timo Jolivet. So we have a, a code that uh, given giving sigma can uh, give us uh, the substitution phi. So it's uh, then easy to apply our algorithm to, to compute uh, the eigenvalues uh, knowing the substitution phi. Uh, so if sigma is proper, the eigenvalues only depend on the matrix. Uh, and in particular, the eigenvalues are not uh, sensitive to the order of uh, letter 
we can uh, exchange uh, some letters. And if sigma is uh, still proper, then the dynamical system will uh, have the same uh, eigenvalues. But in the general case, if sigma is uh, not proper, if we exchange uh, two different uh, letter, it's letters, it's possible to have uh, different eigenvalues for the systems that we will obtain. Uh, so I will uh, present uh, an example and uh, the lemma that we will use to, to compute uh, the eigenvalues associated to this system. We have seen that uh, to know the rational eigenvalues, uh, this is equivalent to knowing uh, the periodic spectrum of the substitution. So in uh, our example, we will compute the periodic spectrum because uh, it's uh, uh, the notation are a little bit uh, easier. And we will conclude with the rational eigenvalues of the system. So we will now consider this substitution, which is uh, proper because uh, all the images of letter start with uh, zero. So we will first need the following lemma. Uh, so in the case of a proper non-periodic substitution with incidence matrix M sigma, uh, we will focus on the second part of uh, this lemma. The fourth part will be used uh, a little bit later in this talk. So we will have that a prime number P belongs to the periodic spectrum if and only if we will have a M sigma to the D that will left multiply by the unity vector uh, belongs to uh, P Z to the D. Uh, if we take M sigma to the D, this is the matrix of the matrix of sigma to the D. And if we left multiply by one, uh, this is equivalent to compute uh, the length of all the images of letters by the substitution uh, sigma D. So this property means that if we take sigma d, all the images of letters are multiple of uh, p. So let's uh, do it. We compute uh, m sigma square. Here, m sigma is given by the uh, count of each letter in a sigma of zero for the first column. So we have one, zero, one, one. And for the second column, we compute the, we count the image, the number of letter in sigma of uh, one. We have two, zero and two ones. And if we left multiply by one, one, the matrix sigma square, we obtain the vector six, 12. Well, that means that uh, sigma square of zero has a length uh, six and sigma square of one has a length 12. So we want to compute the integers, the prime integers P such that uh, this matrix belongs to P, Z, D. Uh, so here we can have a two or and three. So the prime number that belongs to the periodic spectrum are two and three. And this ends the first step. So in this step, we have just computed the prime numbers uh, belonging to the periodic spectrum. And now we have to, to check uh, which powers of two and which power of, uh, of three also belongs to this periodic spectrum. Uh, then two cases can uh, occur. Um, perhaps this, uh, these numbers appear in the periodic spectrum with the uh, unbounded uh, exponent. Or in the other case, we can have uh, a number that appears in the periodic spectrum with, uh, with bounded exponent. This is the aim of the second step uh, to separate these uh, two cases. And we have uh, a lemma of uh, linear algebra that was approved by uh, Durand in 2000. So we have the equivalence between two properties. The first one 
uh, means uh, that for all integer n, we will have that uh, uh, one mk belongs to pn zd. Uh, this means that uh, pn belongs to the periodic spectrum for each exponent n. Uh, and this is equivalent to the fact that uh, P divides uh, a, G, a GCD of um, uh, the coefficient of uh, a polynomial. So uh, the aim is the following. We will uh, just compute the, this sequence of uh, vectors. So we have one, one times n and so on. And we stop when uh, the base is, uh, this base is uh, not free and we take the maximal exponent such that this base is, is uh, free. Uh, then we compute the recession of the matrix M to this subspace and we take the characteristic polynomial of uh, this matrix. And P should divide the, the GCD of all these coefficients uh, we just forget the r plus one uh, coefficient. So in our case, we will take the matrix M and we will uh, check uh, what is the greater, greatest R such that this base is uh, free. Uh, we will have that uh, one times m sigma equals to this vector. So we have a one and a one m is a free base. And the space is a, a, of a size two, so it's not necessary to go further. So here we have a space uh, of size uh, two. So this matrix here is uh, still the matrix uh, m. So we compute the characteristic polynomial of uh, M and we will uh, obtain X square minus uh, 3X and the GCD of its uh, coefficient would be uh, three because we take uh, this minus three and then the constant term uh, zero and we obtain three as a GCD. So coming back to this lemma, uh, the only integer p that divides this uh, GCD is p equals to three. So we can conclude that uh, three will appear in the uh, periodic spectrum with an unbounded uh, exponent. That to say that all the three to the n um, belongs to this periodic spectrum. And as a consequence, we know that uh, the prime number two belong to this periodic spectrum, but uh, with a bonded uh, exponent. So the final step is to determine uh, which is the largest exponent of, exponent of two that uh, appears in this periodic spectrum. So the third lemma we will use is the following. Uh, if we have a prime number p, then the maximal power of p that appears in the periodic spectrum would be the maxi would be the power of, of p that divides one m to the pd. Uh, so we just have to compute m to the pd and left multiply by one. And we will check in this uh, vector uh, the maximal power of p that divides uh, each coordinates. And sometimes this matrix will be very huge if we work in a large alphabet. And uh, p to the d can also be a large number. Here, the, the integer d is uh, the size of the alphabet. So if this one is uh, too hard to compute, uh, we can use uh, this property to have a, a shorter uh, computation. Uh, 
and we can compute all the one times m to the m. And if we have the same power of p that divides the, this matrix and this matrix when the power increased by d, the size of the alphabet. So if we have the same power of p that divides the coordinates of all these uh, vectors, then this is the uh, maximal power for each matrix uh, uh, m to the k multiplied by the unity vector of one. So in our case, we have a p equal to two, and uh, the size of the alphabet is also also two. So we just have to compute m to the four. It's quite simple here. So we compute m sigma to the four. We left multiply by the unity vector, and we obtain this decomposition. So we see that the maximal power of two that divides uh, this coordinate and this one is uh, only two. So we have that the maximal exponent of two is uh, one in the periodic spectrum. We will only have uh, two to the one. We can then conclude that the periodic spectrum is composed of all the three to the m and two times three to the m. We have all the powers of three and for two, we only have uh, two uh, to the one. And as a consequence, we have a, a description of all the eigenvalues of uh, uh, the dynamical system and the set of eigenvalues is all the exponential of two i k pi over three to the m or two times three to the m. So we only needed the matrix associated to sigma for this calculation. And uh, because the substitution is uh, proper, we didn't need to, to, to know anything else. Uh, as I said before, if sigma is not proper, we first have to compute uh, the proper substitution that gives the same dynamical system. Uh, and uh, often we, we have a definition defined on a very large alphabet, so the, the computation are a little bit longer in this case. Okay, so we know how to compute the rational eigenvalues associated to our substitutive dynamical system. And we will now focus on the, the question of this talk, that is to check if uh, a sequence, a substitutive sequence has uh, some constant arithmetic progression. So as I said before, the key fact is that if we have a constant arithmetic progression with essential period P, then P belongs to the periodic spectrum. Uh, so we know how to compute this spectrum and we can check if we have some essential periods uh, in this set. So to prove this proposition, the idea is uh, that knowing a constant arithmetic progression, we can define a p-periodic set defined by this uh, constant arithmetic progression. And if we have a p-periodic set, we know the following proposition that I mentioned before, that if we have a p-periodic set, then we will have that p belongs to the periodic spectrum. So that's why it was uh, important to compute uh, this periodic spectrum uh, to, to obtain a, a necessary condition for being a, a, a period of a constant arithmetic progression. So we will obtain the following algorithm. Uh, given an integer p, if we want to check if a sequence admits a constant arithmetic progression with this period, we will first compute the periodic spectrum. Then if the integer p uh, does not belong to the periodic spectrum, then we have to compute the essential period corresponding to p. 
because uh, if we have a, uh, if P does not belong to the periodic spectrum, maybe we can have a constant arithmetic progression included in a, an arithmetic progression with a, a smaller period. So this uh, step is uh, to compute the essential periods that correspond to P. And then we have to check if we have an arithmetic progression in the images of letter under a poor of uh, sigma. So we want that uh, the images of letter under this uh, substitution, uh, we want them to have a length multiple of um, pay tilde, uh, because uh, with this condition, we know that the fixed point X would be a concatenation of uh, this word. And because as there are lengths multiple of pay tilde, it suffices to check if in these images we have a constant arithmetic progression. So uh, we need this substitution and to compute the MP, we will use this lemma that uh, we already used before. We use the second uh, property uh, in the case of prime numbers. And we will now focus on the first part of the, this lemma uh, that asserts that uh, an integer P tilde belongs to the periodic spectrum if and only if there exists uh, such an integer, such an integer, uh, such that we have this matrix relation. Uh, this relation means that uh, if we take sigma to the m p tilde, we left multiply by one, so we obtain the length of the images of letters. And all these uh, images will have a length multiple of uh, p tilde. So it's possible to obtain uh, this uh, number and it will halt in a finite time because we can compute according to the second part of the proof that uh, this, um, this number will have a, a bound depending on uh, this uh, MD and the decomposition of uh, P tilde into prime numbers. Okay, so coming back to our example, we have computed the periodic spectrum of uh, the dynamical system associated to this substitution. And now we want to answer uh, these two questions. Uh, do we have an arithmetic progression of period 10 in the fixed point of sigma and uh, with uh, period uh, 12? So we start with period 10. Uh, we see that 10 does not belong to the periodic spectrum, and we will see that the greater divisor of uh, 10 that belongs to the periodic spectrum is uh, 2. So we have to check if we have uh, an arithmetic progression of period 2 in the fixed point of uh, sigma. And if we had uh, this arithmetic progression of period 10, uh, it would necessarily be a subsequence of an arithmetic progression with period uh, two. So if we look at uh, the definition of sigma, we see that the images of letter are multiple of two, so we can uh, cut it into subwords of length two. And we will see that the x2n will belong to uh, the alphabet zero one, so the subsequent x2n cannot be constant. And the x2n plus one will be uh, defined by these letters and is uh, not constant. So the answer is uh, no, we don't have any arithmetic progression of period 10. Uh, for the second question, we want to look after arithmetic progression of period 12. So we take the greater divisor of uh, 12 that belongs to the periodic spectrum, and we will uh, uh, see that uh, pay tilde equals to six in this case. 
uh, the images of letter under our sigma is not are not multiple of six, so we have to compute sigma square, and we will see that uh, it's uh, okay. The lengths of uh, images of letter are six and twelve, so we can uh, decompose it into factors of uh, length uh, six. And we will obtain the letters appearing in uh, X uh, six N. And we will see that uh, this is not a constant arithmetical progression. We will then have X six N plus one, which uh, uh, consists only to one letter, so letter one. So X uh, six N plus one is constant. And we also see that X uh, six N plus two is also constant equals to zero. And for the other arithmetic progression of period six, we will have uh, x, uh, six and plus three, four, five uh, that are not uh, constant because we see uh, here that uh, we have a different letters. So we have two constant arithmetic progression with period six. And we can conclude that we have a four arithmetic progression of period 12. Here, this one uh, can be separated into x 12n plus 1 and x 12n plus 7. And here we have x 12n plus 2 and uh, plus 8. And so, in the proper case, we know that we can have a power of sigma. Uh, where the images of letters are multiple of uh, our essential period. If sigma is not proper, then we can compute the substitution phi that is proper and uh, that uh, whose underlying dynamical system is conjugated to the one of uh, sigma. And we can also have a projection uh, between uh, the images of uh, letters for five and uh, the alphabet of sigma. And we can also uh, check if uh, there exists some uh, arithmetic progression in the sequence X. So in general, you can uh, propose a period and uh, it's possible to answer whether it corresponds to an arithmetic progression or not. Uh, but you have to first choose a period. And if we don't find uh, any constant arithmetical arithmetic subsequence, we don't have any method in the general case to answer if uh, there exists or, or not. Uh, but in the constant length case, uh, we will have the following uh, uh, tool. That is, uh, we can describe all the essential periods of constant arithmetic progression. The idea is that uh, according to the description of the eigenvalues, we know that each essential period should divide uh, one of the h time l to the m. So we will describe the letters appearing in the arithmetic progression with these periods. And this can be done by a recursive construction in a graph. So the graph is uh, defined by this way. Uh, so we will uh, take for the substitution sigma of constant length uh, and with height h, we'll first uh, choose the alphabet a i, uh, that are the alphabets defined by the computation of the eight. Uh, when we computed the eight before, we had uh, uh, separated the sequence into uh, two alphabets with the odd and even uh, indices. And these alphabets are the starting points here, the AI, oh, sorry, of, uh, our uh, graph, and then we draw an edge starting from a vertex uh, C. Uh, 
with this uh, method. So we take all the letters belonging to the alphabet C, we apply sigma, and we take uh, one uh, index and we define this uh, alphabet with the letters with the same uh, index when we apply sigma. So I think it would be a, a little bit uh, more precise with a uh, the whole alphabet because with the eight one we have only one alphabet and uh, we will take the image of uh, zero one and two under sigma and it goes to zero zero two for the letter with uh, index zero so we will draw um, this uh, edge and if we take uh, the letter with index uh, one, we will obtain one and zero. So we draw uh, this uh, edge and uh, so on. And then we continue with uh, this vertex, uh, zero two. So we'll consider the letter zero two. And uh, we will see that uh, starting from 0 to the letters with index 0 is 0 2. So we will draw a loop going to 0 2 with, uh, uh, with label uh, 0. And we continue. So starting from 0 2, we also obtain uh, 0 1 at the index uh, 1 and 1 2 at the index uh, 2. And we will continue with uh, all these uh, edges. And we know that uh, this will halt in a finite time because uh, all these uh, vertices are subsets of the initial uh, alphabet. So we can draw this graph uh, quite uh, easily. And uh, then we will see that it corresponds to the arithmetical, the arithmetic progression. to look at the alphabet of this subsequence with period H, L, M, and starting at uh, index K. Then it suffices to decompose uh, in the first index K into base uh, L. And then we follow the path uh, starting from K0 and K1 and uh, so on uh, in uh, the in the graph, and we will obtain the alphabet of this subsequence. Uh, and if we want to, to determine the, the alphabet of uh, a substitutive sequence, so the image of X under the, the morphism phi, uh, then it suffices to take the image under five of uh, the vertex uh, described uh, be above. And in particular, if we want to have a, a constant arithmetical progression for this uh, sequence, then uh, this means that uh, this alphabet is reduced to one letter. And we can say that the sequence uh, X admits a constant arithmetic progression if and only if we have a, a vertex of uh, the graph reduced to one letter. And we have the same for the sequence Y. So in our example, uh, we know, we can see, for example, that this vertex is reduced to one letter. So it will correspond to an arithmetic progression, a constant arithmetic progression. And we want to determine uh, which progression this is. Uh, so starting for the initial uh, vertex, this one describes all the sequence uh, X. Here following this edge, it uh, means that we apply sigma one time and take the, 
letters with index two. So this alphabet one, two corresponds to the uh, subsequence x, three, n plus two. And if we apply sigma another time, we will obtain here the, that the subsequence x, nine, n plus eight is only composed of the letter one. So we have this constant arithmetic progression. And we can also find two other arithmetic, constant arithmetic progression with period nine following this uh, path and uh, this one. So we have this uh, three arithmetic progression with uh, period uh, nine. And we can also find some other arithmetic progression with period uh, 27, for example, following uh, the, uh, yes, this work, we will have a, a constant arithmetic progression with period 27. So we can have uh, several other arithmetic progression that are constant. I just gave here the, the one with the smaller period. And now if we want to apply a morphism, we will apply it to uh, all these uh, alphabets and we will obtain this graph. And we will uh, find the previous constant arithmetic progression. So we will have uh, this constant arithmetic progression in the substitutive sequence Y. And we will have another constant arithmetic progression here with period three that will uh, appear. And we will have uh, uh, Y 3N plus two that equals two B for each integer N. So this is uh, the constant arithmetic progression with the smaller period that we can find in uh, the sequence Y. And we can also find several other constant arithmetic progression. Okay, so if we study a little bit more the graph uh, G of sigma, we will find that uh, we will be exactly in one of the following cases. Uh, the first one is that uh, the graph has no singleton. Uh, the second part is that uh, every long enough path ends in a singleton. And if we are not in the two first cases, then this is equivalent to the following property. So there exists a cycle among vertices with cardinal greater or equal to two. And they should have at least one singleton in their descendants. And these properties can be translated in the case of uh, our substitutive sequence in uh, this way. So if we are in the first case, then X cannot have any arithmetic progression. I should write uh, no constant arithmetic progression, sorry. Uh, in the second case, this means that X would be periodic. And in the third case, this means that the essential periods uh, of letters in X are unbounded. So we see that uh, the, we don't have a, a large variety of uh, behavior and we should be in uh, one of uh, these uh, three behaviors. Um, we can also see in uh, the graph uh, G of sigma if uh, the sequence is a uh, tuplets. Uh, and to check it, we just have to follow the path starting from zero, zero, zero. And if it ends in a singleton, then the sequence would be topic. Okay, so as a conclusion, we can see that in the general case, we can compute the set of rational eigenvalues. In the constant length case, we can describe all the periods of letters by an automaton. But in the general case, we can only check if there exists a constant arithmetic progression for a given period. And we let as an open question to describe all the set of periods in the general case. Okay, that's, so that's all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valérie. Uh, so first of all, uh, Sorry, do you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, I hear you. Sorry. Uh, so we have a 
a remark from Yerik Duda uh, in the chat about yes. this, this kind oh. of automaton. Uh, hello, uh, so, so, so this is a, a, a bit uh, different situation, but we are only the first the, the, the dominant eigenvector eigenvalue, for example, for the probability distribution of, 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 of symbols in, in such sequence, or, or, or which can be used for some fractals to, to find the how, how, the how the dimension, for example, of, of the boundary. So, but I was working on that 15, year, 15 years ago, but I would like to discuss. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you uh, well. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, so sorry. I I read your remark in the chat and you say that this kind of substitution uh, automaton can be also used to describe and find out the dimension of some fractals. And uh, you you put a, a link in the chat, so I I, did, I didn't use it to for hours of dimension, but uh, I I think it could be interesting. Yeah. So I, I think you can discuss if it is uh, indeed the same or if they are related these two kinds of automata, and so on. So it is just something to be discussed, I guess. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. So. Are there other questions or remarks or anything? So if not, thank you very much, Valérie. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the talk.